It has been over 2,000 years since Jesus walked the earth. And since that time, there's been numerable crises that have plagued us, incurable diseases, famines, wars, terrorism, and let's not forget the Crusades. And yet Christianity somehow survived all of these. So why are more and more people today turning away from the faith of their parents? Is it the internet with the deluge of information that swept people away from being faithful? Or is it the numerous translations of the Bible that have confused its believers with its contradictions? Come on, folks, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Why now? What is different today than, let's say, 50 years ago or even less? To say Satan almost seems trite and like a pat answer. I want to get into this deeper with you. So let's go and explore what this and what we need to know about remaining steadfast in your faith on an undiluted God. In this program, we'll be exploring the healing oils of ancient scripture along with their powerful healing constituents. Founder of Salvation Army, William Booth, during an interview once said, I consider the chief dangers which confront the coming century will be religion without the Holy Spirit, Christianity without Christ, forgiveness without repentance, politics without God, and heaven without hell. Boy, is he spot on. I can't tell you the number of churches that I've been to, and it was dead as a doornail. I really mean it. I mean, I'm not one who needs to be entertained with loud music or whooping and hollering either. I'm mature enough in my faith to be able to see through the smoke and mirrors of a show. You know, when you know God, you know what's God and what's the hype. Christianity without Christ? Hmm, that seems like a good one. Let's see. I think that was the one single fact that separates us from the rest, don't you think? When you pull down that cornerstone and you pull that out, the whole thing falls apart. And many are seeing this happen in their own churches. This is done to include everyone and not offend anybody or to be politically correct, so to speak. I'm all good with letting everyone believe whatever they want, but let's say the road is narrow and when you delete Jesus from it, you have another religion altogether. So let's think about Christianity without Christ. Okay, let's take Christ out. Hmm. You know what? Even when you look at that word, I Googled it and just in case to see what came up and Google said it was insane. Okay, even Google thinks this is insane. Yes, Google, you're right about that. Christianity without Christ is insane. Who's ever thought of anything but that? Religion includes being forgiven. So forgiveness without repentance, what is that? Is that sort of like someone forgiving someone but they haven't asked yet? I'm still trying to wrap my brain around that one. Oh, I know what it is. It's pay it forward, right? You get to do anything you want and you know you're forgiven. I'm sorry, it really doesn't work that way, folks. Repentance is required. It is the RSVP for the invitation to the marriage supper. Remember the foolish virgins? He said, depart from me, I never knew you. Folks, they were virgins. They were clothed in white. They were with the bride. They had the lamp. They, what did they have not? They didn't have the oil they needed. So they had to run out to Walmart in the middle of the night. And when they went out to get the oil, they missed the boat, right? Jesus came back and they were not there. So this just doesn't work, right? Repentance is turning away. So let's say you used to smoke or you, you, know, you quit. Well, you just repented from smoking. You get it? It's not saying sorry and then going out and doing it again. Somehow these terms have gotten so misused and twisted. Do we even know what repenting is? It's not a particular thing. It's turning away from the way you were going and going the opposite direction. I do know God's will to give you the grace to forgive. I mean, I understand that, I get it. There was a time in my life, a season a long time ago when I was walking with the Lord 
and I was married to someone who was an unbeliever. Now he came along and he was beginning to believe that he was holding me back from doing the things that I needed to do. And so he decided he was going to set me free because he was given a dream at night that I was supposed to go out and minister to the world, but he wasn't going to be a part of it. But the truth was he really wanted to go back out and do the whole bars and womenizing type thing. So he wanted to divorce me, but I wouldn't give up on him. I kept believing in faith that he was going to come around. So he'd get mad at me and cuss me out because I just smile and say it's okay, right? And then one day he said that he was going to go out there and get himself a hooker and do it in the front yard with me because he just wanted to get rid of me and just be done with me. Well, I stood in faith for that man and believed, but he ended up believing me and marrying another woman. So in all of that, God gave me the grace to walk through it, to forgive him, and to not get angry at him. I never held a grudge against what he did because for the four years that I was married to him, he taught me so many things that this, to this day, it's because of his being a part of my life that has brought me to this point. And so at that point, I, didn't, I ended up going and joining into missions and went into full-time ministry because of it. And so I just wanted you to sh share that testimony because, you know, that's probably some of you have experienced similar things where having maybe a partner who's not walking in faith and you don't share the same testimony. But let's just talk about the last one, politics without God. Boy, are we seeing this play out. I know in America, Christians like to know that the man they believe in before electing him to office is going to be in agreement and adhere to what he says and believe, right? I always felt that if he was led by God, I could trust him. I could trust his leadership. I could know that he's being guided by the Holy Spirit. It is unfortunate, though, that most of the men we see running for office, though, may not truly have the faith or belief to act upon it. You know that? In this current election, I'm not sure if, we, if I trust what's coming from their lips, so I might want to look at what they're doing, if they are a believer. We sometimes equate integrity and honesty with their faith in God. In other words, only a Christian could possess those characteristics, but that we know is not true. We are all too familiar with those who claim to be Christian and do evil acts that will progress of the new world order of one world government domination. So we need to be on our knees praying for these leaders. And the last one, heaven without hell. Oh, this is my personal favorite. I love talking about hell. It's a place of torment for the unlikely souls who did not get raised as a Christian. Come on, really? We need to know what salvation really is. I know a lot of people who question even the existence of hell, and they can't fathom that a good God would send people to eternal fire and punishment. This is a huge topic, and I really can't cover it all here. But to suffice to say, if no punishment, then how can we do anything we want, right? There's no reason for alarm. Do we really need this to believe? I don't know about you, but I am not persuaded to go out in sin and think that it's okay later. We need to walk in holiness and be able to, to adhere to what God's word says all the time. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Cupressus sempervians, commonly referred to as the Cyprus of the Cupressaceae family, is also an Italian or Mediterranean Cyprus. The tree is a perennial tree, conical shaped, about 28 meters or 80 feet high, and originates from the east, now mostly found in gardens or cemeteries in the Mediterranean region. It is an evergreen tree with dark green foliage, small flowers, and round brown-gray cones with seed nuts inside. The wood is hard and durable, red yellow in color. The Phoenicians and Cretans used the wood for building ships and houses, while the Egyptians made sarcophagus from it, and the Greeks used it to carve statues of their gods. Cypress oil has been used since ancient times for purification and as incense. The Greek word, simmerverence, from which the botanical name is derived, means live forever. 
and the tree also gave its name to the island of Cyprus, where it used to be worshipped. Just as cedar wood is symbolic of strength, Cyprus is also known for strength and durability. These trees were described in the Apocrypha Book of Sarah as trees which grew up to the clouds. The Hebrew word for Cyprus is Tirza, which means make slender. The Bible tells us that the wood used for Noah's Ark was gopher wood, as described in Genesis 6:14, that says, Make thee an ark of gopher wood, rooms shalt thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. It was thought that Cyprus was used because of its ability to stand up to adverse conditions. Building anything that big would require trees to reach the clouds. It is also believed that the cross of Jesus was made with Cyprus wood, and the tree seems to always be associated with death. Isaiah 60 verse 13 tells us how Cyprus represents the sanctuary of the holy feet of God in the coming messianic kingdom. It reads, The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together, to beautify the place of my sanctuary, and I will make the place of my feet glorious. Well, let's take a look now at what you need to have on hand to use essential oil. Really no special equipment is needed if you're using essential oils. However, there can be some things that you might want to have on hand that could be very helpful. I mean, you could just take the bottle and just wave it under your nostrils and you can smell it this way. That's one of the easiest ways. I think a diffuser is nice. Now, this is a special machine that allows you to diffuse the essential oils into the air for aromatherapy. Okay, so I have several different ones here. You probably are familiar with these, the little reed diffusers that you can use maybe in your um, bathroom or bedroom. You would actually add a special oil to it, the carrier oil, and then you could use drops of essential oil in here. I have a cool mist nebulizer right here, and this is just a little well that you would add your essential oil directly in, and then it comes up, and uh, this has a pump down here at the bottom, so it's actually diffusing into the air. And this unit here can cover up to 1,200 square feet. Oops. Now this is a car diffuser. This is something that you can just plug into your battery uh, or your what used to be a cigarette lighter place, and you use a pad to apply the essential oils and put it right directly into here. And we have several other kinds here. These are uh, diffusers. This is a scent ball. You can actually plug it in to your bathroom, use these pads to add your essential oils, or you might wanna just get some nice little clay uh, pieces. This is um, that you can display on a table and just put your drops of oil on. They'll just have them in different fusing in the air. Now this is something interesting. This is like a little pad that you can actually wear on your body, but the oils is not absorbed through the skin because it has a little plastic and a full shield, so you can just wear it. A lot of hospitals are using this today. Um, they're actually putting them on patients who come out of chemo to help them with the nausea, or they use it for children. That way they can smell a nice fragrance like mandarin or lavender to help them with their nausea. You can use spray bottles to add your oils to, or you can do something like this. This is an aroma pen. You actually put it on the top of the pen. You can smell it while you're working. So that's a nice way. Now, if you're going to ingest the oils, some people use capsules. And this is, these are empty capsules you can get probably at a health food store. You would use a carry oil and only add maybe one to two drops in there. I like to make tea. So I love Earl Grey tea, which actually contains bergamot. And that's why I love it so much. And I'm going to add some hot water here. Now, since I like to drink tea every day, I like to use honey for my essential oil. So this actually has um, 
uh, honey and essential oil in it. So I just squeeze it right into the tea. And then you can also just use this stick to stir it up. And this would probably be a great way if you wanted to add a drop of cinnamon, if you have high blood pressure or if you uh, suffer from type 2 diabetes, this would be a great way to use it. Now carrier oils would be for using your oils topically on your skin. And this is olive oil, but there's many, many others. There's coconut oil, uh, almond, grapeseed, there's many, many choices for based on their you know, different types of oil. You also can use body lotion to add your essential oils to, or dead sea salts. It's great for taking a bath. Maybe uh, you can use these in a nice hot bath in the evening to help you sleep. I have some already mixed up here in these little containers, so they're ready to go and have some nice little herbs in them. So we have Himalayan salts and dead sea salts. It's nice for baths. And you can also use oils in a roll-on. Now this is great because you just roll it right on. It's all, you would add your carry oil, your essentials here, carry it in your purse, pocket, and have it with you everywhere you go. Not only that, now you can add them to your cleaning products. You can add them to, uh, let's say this is a laundry ball for your dryer. So actually I can just put some lavender directly on this, throw it in the, the dryer and let it tumble with the clothes and make them smell really, really good. And the most important thing you wanna have is a guidebook. And I have several books that I'd like to recommend that you get. Um, on therapeutic blending with essential oil, the healthy cooking with essential oil, and the ones that we're offering here on this special program. And so I wanna invite you to just be empowered to do this by researching, study the oils, find out what you need for your specific situation. And then you'll be able to find many, many ways to incorporate them into your life. So we're gonna take a break, we'll be right back. Okay, we're gonna have fun today. I wanna to make something to show you how easy it is to make a product. Now, I have this little plastic tube here. This is an inhaler. Um, it has a little cotton wick that goes with it and a little cap on the end. So what we'll do is, first thing we wanna do is gather the essential oils that we're gonna be using for this. In this particular product with a diffuser or inhaler, pocket inhaler like this, we don't need it to carry oil, so we're gonna just be using essential oils only. So I'm gonna be looking at making maybe a blend to help with weight loss. So I'm gonna be using grapefruit and lemon, and let's see, I think I might use some sweet orange, and I think I'm gonna add some cypress to it. So I'm gonna use those four oils. So the first thing we wanna do is begin with adding our drops to our bowl here. So I'm gonna start with five drops of each oil. And there is no magic number. You can use as much as you like in this particular case because it is an inhaler. One, two, three, four, five. I think what's more important in this case is we wanna make sure it smells good. Ah, it's going to be really good with this sweet orange. And you can see these are very thin oils. They come out really fast, so you got to be careful. And cypress, they help us lose weight. That one didn't want to come out. All right, now, I take this glass stir rod I have. I'm going to stir it up and just make sure I like it before I put, put the product in its thing. Now. We're gonna take this cotton wick and we're gonna just roll it around in the oil just so that it's absorbed and just get all the drops. So you probably use about 20 drops of essential oil on this. You can use a little less if you like, but it will last quite a long time. So now I'm gonna take this, this wick and I'm gonna drop it right into this applicator. And then we have a little butt that we put on the end and just pop that in. And this is the top. So now you just screw that back on. You have this to carry in your purse with you. You could take it on an airplane if you, you know, feel like you need something. And you just inhale it. Now, I know that Dr. Hirsch recommends you just 
inhale it in one side, take a break, and then just do the other side. And that's how easy it is to use this. See, simple. All right, now we can make one more product. We have a little bit of time. And I, this time I'm gonna do a roll-on. Now a roll-on is something you're gonna use on the skin. So you need to take into consideration how it's gonna be used, how often is it gonna be used, and for those of you who are using any kind of medications, you wanna make sure that you're not gonna have any kind of uh, interaction going on, so you wanna check all the safety features, safety uh, ratings on the essential oil that you're using. Now, I'm going to be using coconut oil as my base oil, so I'm going to go ahead and just add my curry oil into the bottle here. Oops, add a little bit too much there, so I'm gonna pour a little out. Came out really fast. Gotta leave a little bit of room in the top for essential oil. So I'll put that there. I'm gonna move this aside. Now, in this particular case, again, it's on the skin. So I need to be careful about which oils I choose to use. I'm going to be looking at something that will help me again with maybe my appetite cravings. So I'm gonna go with dill and peppermint and bergamot. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be a fun one. And let's see, we got cinnamon and fennel. Now, normally I would take a perfume strip and put a drop of oil on it and just wave it under my nostril and make sure I like it before I start blending all these oils. Now, if you don't have a perfume strip to try that, and then this is probably the best way to do it, is just to hold your bottles together and make sure you like that scent. Because I got a lot of things going on here. Got peppermint, bergamot, and dill. What a combination, huh? <laughs> sort of uh, like a, a minty pickle, you know? So you might want to say, well, maybe I don't want to go with that dill after all. And I think I might try the fennel instead. Because that's sort of more of like a licorice candy smell to it. Nice, that's very nice. So I'm going to try those together. Now in this particular case, this is a roll-on, I would probably use about 12 to 21 drops. Um, I'm, the reason we have that range is because it just depends how, all, how often you're going to use it, um, who's going to be using it, the age of the person, the health condition of the person, and so on. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and begin with adding my fennel. And I did about four drops of that one, three to four drops. I'm gonna add peppermint. Now peppermint's pretty strong, so I don't wanna add as much. I'll just add about two or three drops. Bergamot, I'm gonna do as my top note, so I'm gonna add quite a few more of that. Now, we wanna blend these together again. Stir them up. And just wave it under your nostrils and check to make sure you like it. And I think that I need a little bit more. Um, I'm going to try grapefruit because the bergamot was not as powerful as much as I would like. So I'll just add a little more of that for my top note. Ah, now that's nice because the grapefruit really adds a lot. Now what you need to do is take a pipette and you will actually put this into your bottle here, which I don't have, so I'm gonna to have to pour it in and try to get it into the bottle without the pipette. Normally use a pipette, make it easier. All right, so this has a little roller ball top to it, which you just need to pop right in. Put your top back on, shake it up, and there you have it. Now you have a nice little roll on. I'd probably use this two or three times a day, maybe even before meals, just to give me, uh, you know, that, save that little bit of uh, appetite off. All right, we're gonna take a break and we're gonna to go to viewer questions.
Okay, Mark, you got a couple of questions for yeah, me? Yeah, I have a question for you, Becca. I have one for you. <laughs> okay. You're, you smell sweet there. So. I do. Yeah, so sweet you give me a toothache. <laughs> what got you into aromatherapy? Well, it was the, remember when we were in the RV and I discovered that place on my face that looked like skin cancer and I used the myrrh on it and it healed it. And I said, wow, there's something more to these oils besides just the spiritual significance. They have healing properties in them. So that's really what got me started. And now you're teaching and why, you te why did you decide to start teaching? Oh, so many questions. You have to educate a person on how to use the oils. You know, if we just simply give them to people, they can take them home and, you know, have a lot of things happen, and we don't want that. Uh, people need to really be using caution with them. They're like a medicine, so you need to keep them out of the reach of children. Um, we store them in the dark bottles. You've seen the dark glass bottles that we use for our oils. You need to keep them away from the heat, from light, because that'll break them down. And you only need one or two drops. And what kind of education do you um, share with people? <laughs> Is this a shameless plug, Mark? No, 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 no. I just want to tell, talk about you. Well, We've been talking about the yeah, oils. Yeah, yeah. It just kept growing. And, of course, my writing books about the essentials kept 50 growing. Fifty books? Yeah. So I decided to start a school on aromatherapy. And so Aroma Hut Institute, we teach aromatherapy certification and help people to educate others and to do consultations for people that need help with those, uh, you know, using oils for healing. So I want to thank you for watching today. We've enjoyed sharing this with you. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us on Facebook, and we'll see you next time.